I told you there's information. I told you there's understanding. What was the third component? Application. In the beginning of my lecture, I also told you that there was a unique situation in the ummah. The information, the understanding, and the application came from the shaykh. All of it came from the shaykh. Where do you go to learn? The shaykh. You learn the hadith from the shaykh. Then the shaykh explains it to you, so you get the understanding. Then you see the shaykh's behavior. You see him practically, and you get the application. All of it was coming from one person. So when the tabi'un were learning from Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, they were getting all three components of education at one time. Information, understanding, and application, mentorship, all of it was fused into one person. In the modern world, that is simply not possible. In the modern world, it's not possible for everyone. Some lucky of you, you might, you might find a shaykh, you sit at their feet, you know, and you learn from them, and you, know, you learn adab from them, and all of this other stuff. It's not possible for the entire ummah. It's just not. We're not in the modern world, you are too busy. You have, we're, schools are institutionalized. We don't even, you know, when our children go to school, which I told you already, most don't go to Islamic school. When our children go to public school, they have a great math teacher. But is that math teacher their character teacher too? No, they're not learning practical life from their math teacher. They're just learning what? Math. That's all they're learning. So we've broken education down into just give me the information. Give me the understanding. I don't want your practical lifestyle. I don't want that. We have alienated these things. Now we can't just complain about it. We have to accept that's reality and work with it. How do you then adjust your strategy based on this new reality that may not have been there before, right? Before the Imam of the Masjid was also the Murabbi of, the, of everybody's small community. Every two, three blocks there was a Masjid. Every Masjid had an elder and the elder was sort of a mentor to the children and things like that. That is a romantic model that is now gone. That is no longer the case. That is no longer the case. And you cannot expect the Imam or the teacher to give 10 people that kind of attention. What to speak of 100, what to speak of 1,000. So how are we going to do this? The only solution that I, I've, I've been thinking about this for a long time. <laughs> what do we do about the practical side? And I've come to a, f a few conclusions. Number one conclusion I have come to is there is no school and there is no collective institution that can teach application. Schools, masjids, universities cannot teach Islamic what? Application. They cannot. They cannot teach adab. Schools cannot teach adab. They can, very limited. Very, very limited. Like respect for teacher they can teach. Fine. Respect for books they can teach. But the true application, like the practical dimension of Islam, can, that education can only come inside the house. Only. If you don't address it inside the house, you can kiss Islamic education goodbye. Because Islamic education will then only be information and understanding, but it will never be applied. Application is a, ma a project for the house itself. It is a project for the house itself. What do I mean? I mean I just taught my child to make dua to enter the house, but she never hears me make it. I never tell her, hey, we're going into the house. No, 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 you forgot, come back out, go again. Make the dua and go again. That is not just knowledge now, that is what? That's application. We just, uh, you know, after Maghrib, I just shared a hadith about jealousy. I shared a hadith about sharing, about giving. You just got into a fight with your sister. What do you remember from that hadith? Oh, the Prophet says, so and so and so and so and so. What are you going to do with your sister now? Sorry, you can have it. But I want to give it to you because the Prophet said so. Application. Application. Application will not come anywhere except family. And then the extension of that, this is very important for us, especially in an alienated society. You know, we, families that are worried about these things have to come together. Families that worry about the character of their children, right? They have to come together. But come together not to learn the, not to sit there in a the lecture. No, 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 not for that. But to interact with each other. When you spend time with each other, that's when riba happens. That's when fights happen. That's when, you know, accidents happen. That's when somebody accidentally makes fun of someone and their feelings get hurt. When you have interaction. So the practical teaching of Islamic manners happens when people deal with each other. Right? You know what we need to do? You need to get all, you, some of your family lives in Ohio. Some of your family lives in Chicago. 
some of your family lives in California, you need to have a family get together, everybody, everybody, once a summer. Everybody, let's do a road trip to Michigan. Let everybody, let's do a road trip to Ohio. Everybody, let's do a road trip somewhere. And the whole family gets together. Everybody gets together. All the people that usually say, you know, they like each other, but when they spend 10 days together, ho ho ho. And then families reminding each other. Families helping one another. Cousins are getting along. You know, we don't have that experience in the West, right? You just have husband, wife, children, and you visit the family once in a while. We don't have large family get-togethers. We don't have those, but we need to institutionalize those. And if you don't have large extended family, then do it with friends. Friends leaving home, going on a journey together, spending time with each other, building brotherhood, sisters building sisterhood, children building, building bond with each other, and you guys doing practical stuff like sharing. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan for practicality. I'm a really big fan of the Boy Scouts, for example. My boys get a little bit older. There's a, there's a Muslim Boy Scout thing in, uh, in Florida that I know about, Panama City. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic. The brother takes them from the masjid, they pray fajr, they go out in the woods, they have to, by the evening, the boys are told, well, we know how to build a fire here, we can show you how to do it, but you're going to build your own, you're going to cook your own. And you have to decide who's going to clean the plates, who's going to mind the tent, who's going to do this. You have to learn to work with each other. No cell phones, no video games, no nothing. No technology, no Wi-Fi, no 3G, no nothing. Just the woods and you, and you have to deal with human beings and learn to work together. It builds brotherhood, it builds character. It builds a sense of responsibility. Man, my job was to clean the plates. Now the plates aren't clean, now we can't have dinner. And it's too, too dark at night to go by the, the lake and wash the dishes. Can't do it now. Practical stuff. Practical stuff will come when we, do, when we start institutionalizing healthy family activities. That will be the way to internalize this stuff. The real teachers of adab are going to have to be the parents. And though you can relegate, you can outsource, you can outsource uh, math education, science education, English education, you can outsource those educations. But I'm arguing for the Muslim parents, you guys, are, we are going to have to become students just like we are teachers to our children for Arabic and for Islam. Because we don't know it ourselves, right? So we gotta learn it and we gotta, we gotta be co-students with our, our generation. So that by the time they're parents one day, they're only teachers, they're not students and teachers. They're just teachers. But if we're gonna raise that bar in a generation, then we're gonna have to humble ourselves and learn with our kids. Because right now you don't even know how to learn. You don't yourself know. This is the, the, the vision that I personally have for Islamic education at the elementary levels. In five minutes, as I wrap up, I'll share with you what my personal take is on Islamic education at the higher levels.